The financing options that any aspiring investor, seasoned investor as well have is mortgage financing from the banks. So we typically focus on the normal commercial banks, the big four. If you work in entities, there's a couple of limitations and permutations, but uh, let's not get into that. That's on a case by case basis. But ultimately you would want to get a 20 year loan for as close to your purchase price as possible at the best possible rate. So we'll go to the major banks, we'll go and apply for financing and we push for the maximum possible term. term. If you're young enough, we'll push for a 30 year loan to lower that installment. Us as investors, we don't want to pay the bank too much. The interest component, if you compare 20 to 30 year loans is quite uh, material, but we don't care because it's a tax deductible. First step to obtain a bond is to determine your eligibility for financing. So reach out to me for a bond pre-qualification. I'll take you through the whole process. It might not be good news, that also happens every now and again, but if you don't know what you're dealing with, you've got no way of planning a way forward. So on a successful pre-qualification, you're also managing your own expectations. Let's say you qualify for a million rand, but you're playing in the 1.5 million rand market. It's a substantial deposit that you will need to put down. Secondly, something comes back on your credit report that shows that you did not pay a doctor or telecom is absolutely renowned. Telcom and Woolworths card are the worst in terms of ITC listings for late payments or non-payments, even though the account may have been closed down years ago. So know all of that upfront, and with that we can structure and strategize your entire purchase plan. And obviously getting the right affordability metrics in place will also change everything. So what goes into an application in terms of supporting documents is uh, one of our most frequently asked questions. And it's also part of how you prepare to ensure that the transaction runs smoothly. If you're purchasing in personal name, it's fairly simple. Application forms, proof of identity, proof of income, and the offer to purchase. If you purchase in an entity, you need to confirm the entity's registration. You need to have an accountant's letter to confirm that it's solvent and not trading, as well as confirmation of shareholders and percentage shareholding to best shape the entire transaction. The banks have to look at it more comprehensively. And then also if you're self-employed, there's quite a lot of additional things that go into it. Because there the banks look at two elements. They look at the business to establish the sustainability of your repayment ability, but they also look at you as individual and thus with that your drawings out of your business. So we need to plan ahead in a lot of instances. I mean, personally, I draw as little as possible because I don't want to pay SARS. We have to pay them here and there, but I'm going to stick to the absolute minimum. And I, I think it's fair to assume that all of us will approach it that way. That, however, can limit my bond affordability. So from personal experience, I start paying myself a higher salary that allows the right qualification amount two to three months prior to a, a starting my property application So for, the, for financing because I need to show the banks that my business can sustain my earnings and over and above that, I need to show that my personal finances are sufficient to cover that financing application. I hope you enjoyed this short interview. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you wanna see the full extended interview with this Power Team member, please join my membership program. In my membership program on YouTube, you get access to exclusive content, discount on merchandise, and you can send me live deals that you're looking at and I will analyze them on my channel.